Hi, my name is Gabor Sabu and this is the fourth part of the Perl 6 tutorial. I'm going to talk about files this time. The rest of the tutorial can be found on this URL. When talking about a language, about the data structures of a language, or about the control structures, it's not that useful without actually being able to read files and write them. So let's go over how can we do that in Perl 6. The first thing we see is the slurp function that we actually already used. It gets a name of a file and reads in all the content of the file into a variable here. So I'm putting it into the scalar variable dollar $content. Slurp reads in everything, including all the new lines, all the lines. So if I print out the content variable, that would print out everything that was in the file. That would be too much for this slide, so I'm just calling the chars method of it that will print out the number of characters in that file. I'm using the REPL again, as I used in the previous uh, cases, and then I'm calling eval slurp and the name of the file. This prints out the number of uh, characters in that file. If I read the same thing into an array, Perl, Perl 5 programmers would think that it will read in line by line the content. But that's not the case with Perl 6. Perl, in Perl 6, the slur function always reads the whole file into a single uh, variable, single string. So this array will have only one element. And if we call the elements function, elements method, that will show that there is only one element in the array. And that element contains all the files. So if I call this on the second file, I'll see that there was only one element and that was the same size as in the previous case. In Perl 6, the way to call every line separately is using the lines function. It also gets the name of the file and returns the content of the file line by line. Running this reveals that there were 12 lines in that file and the first line has 39 characters. Obviously neither slurp nor lines is useful if the file is huge. In those cases we, we want to iterate over the lines one by one, do with, so with something with that line and then go on. In that way we only have to hold one line every time in the memory. So that's what we are going to see here. In this case, we are using the for loop, and here inside we use again the lines function. This case, lines is evaluated uh, lazily, meaning that it will read line by line the file, and every iteration puts the content of the line in this killer variable, and then executes, executes the block. In the block, what we do right now is calling the charge method on that, on that variable, printing out the number of characters in that line. We can see that the first line has 39 characters, then there is an empty line, then 67, and so on. There is also a generic way to open files and read them. Uh, that for that we use the open function. It gets the name of the file and returns a file handler. With this file handler we can do various things. For example, we can read a single line using the get method. It will return a single line. And then we can print it out. Or we can use the lines method on that file handler and then it will be it will read line the lines one by one. Obviously because we have already read one line, this way it will only this time here it only only read the second line and from that on all the other lines. Executing this, we will see that this is the first line that was in the file, and then the second line that was empty, and that's the, uh, and the rest of the file. The last thing that I would like to show is how to write a file. In this case, we call the open function, give it the name of the file that we would like to uh, write to, and then here we give the parameter for the open function that tells it that it's going to open it for writing. By default, if we don't give anything here, that's mean, that means we are opening it for reading. Returns a file handler, and then we can use on that file handler uh, the same method, giving it a string that will be printed to the file. So, for example, 
if I change it to text 4 and then I, uh, then I run it sorry it will read in uh, the content and print it out why? because after I printed it out I called the close method that's not required in Perl 6 but it's uh, important in our case because we would like to make sure that the file has already been written everything to the file so that's the reason I'm calling close otherwise Perl is buffering the output so once I called close I can read in the file with the slurp and then print it out and that's what we saw again just to remind you you can find the rest of the tutorial on this URL thank you for listening